That's a maddening cacophony kicked. Put brilliant restoration back on top of our library of zero cards. Play the brilliant restoration. Here we go. And setting up for this for many, many turns. Today on Commander Replay, we find out what happens when our Light Paws or a Voltron deck has no cards left in library. Next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, there's two great ways to support the channel. All links are in the description below. Welcome back everyone, playing some Light Paws Emperor's Voice today. Let's take a look at this opener. Two lands, but a bit of card draw, and we're mono white, so uh, that's not something you come by every day. So we'll uh, keep this. This one looks interesting. Uh, I was trying to evaluate this while I was building the deck, and my gut feeling is it's probably going to be something a little bit similar to Shram. Uh, maybe runs slightly less, uh, maybe runs slightly less auras than Shram does, but feels like it might be the same sort of thing, but in a different way. Uh, as opposed to drawing cards, you just kind of put them straight into play with Light Paws, but haven't seen it yet. We'll see how it goes today. Pretty excited about it. Ooh. Cadus Mulligan down to five. That's rough. Harden scales for opponent. Eh, at least he's playing blue-black. Should have some card draw in there. Uh, we draw a core Spirit Dancer. More card draw for us. Love it. Wow, you can play this thing untapped? That's crazy. Uh, play the planes. Play the Esper Sentinel. Maybe we can get a draw with this before our turn comes back. That would be super cool. I'm foreseeing an interaction that, like, may be kind of ridiculous here. It's going to take a little bit of setup to get there, but uh, I think things could get kind of wild. He's got a Myriad Landscape. That is helpful in that it basically turns one card into two cards, both of which are lands. But when you're behind on cards, that's a thing that you want. Like, it's not card draw, but turning one card into two is still very important. And that's why I like cards like Gift of Estates, Burnished Heart, even Armillary Sphere. Same sort of idea. There's a Homeward Path. Excellent. Excellent. We don't have to play our land yet. Uh, let's get this Shram into play. And we'll poke fish for one. Oh, never mind. These are both cast. So I was thinking that these are both ETBs. And I was thinking, like, play, get both of these in, play an aura, get another aura out of our deck, and then draw, like, four cards off of that. Uh, that's not how it works, though. These are both cast triggers. But we do catch another land. Love it. We don't have to play our Igonjo yet as a land, which is cool. Uh, opponent hits a soul ring, cracks Myriad Landscape, yeah. Yeah, they're getting themselves back into it now. Uh, probably looking at their commander next turn. Silent Submersible for opponent, yep. Uh, and we get to draw planes, fantastic. Brings back to our turn, there's another planes, excellent. Gotta love the card draw. Uh, let's play the Misfell planes right here, good turn, good time to get the tap land, I think. Uh, we'll get Core Spirit Dancer, and we'll spread out a little bit of damage. And as long as our stuff doesn't get blown up next turn, should be kind of wild. Cast our commander, cast this Hyena Umbra, draw two cards. All seems pretty good. Get another aura out of our deck. Oh, is that three blue decks at the table? Oh, yes. We're going to get to look at some super jank tech that I saw for this deck. I don't want to spoil the secret, though. Also, got some fun tricks with flicker form in the deck. Not a ton of things, but uh, there's like three or four really impactful cards. Guardian of Faith being one of them. Uh, we can ETB this and uh, phase out our other stuff in case we need to protect our things. Um, there's also... Uh, Skyclave Apparition and Cavalier of Dawn. Just in case we need some repeatable removal, gotta solve some problems. Very nice, opponent does not pay for the Thran Dynamo. We draw a Blacksmith skill, Esper Sentinel, putting in work right now. Uh, getting it on turn one is such a big deal. Getting it on turn two or three, sometimes a little late. Then people start playing around it, and, uh, that can be annoying. I've had it happen. Demonic Tutor for opponent, that almost certainly has to be card draw of some kind. White of Precinct 6 coming into play. Plus one, plus one for each creature card in your opponent's graveyards. Yep, they're playing Mill today. Let's check out our commander, and then we'll check out our opponent's commanders. So we're playing Light Paws, two mana, two, two. When an aura enters the battlefield under your control, if you cast it, you may search your library for an aura card with mana value less than or equal to that aura, and has a different name than each aura you control. Put that card onto the battlefield, attached to Light Paws, then shuffle. So yeah, Aura Voltron is the name of the game here. Uh, we're just going to try to load it up with Hyena Umbra and Spirit Mantle, cards like that, and just uh, punch our opponents really hard for a lot of damage that they can't block. The Restoration of Iganjo. Search the library for a Plains. Oh, yeah, that one's solid. i got to start getting that into some decks. We draw Sage's Reverie, a very cool card, and one of the few white cards that really draws efficiently uh, that was printed before two years ago. There is not a lot of them. Also, that Sage's Reverie can find some other cool four drops in our deck. Angelic Destiny is one that I never get to use that's super sweet. Bounty of the Luxa. Interesting card. I always kind of misunderstand how it works. <laughs> Too much text for something that shouldn't be that complicated. 
Uh, oh my god, we're, the, we're playing Mono White, we have 10 cards in hand. What's going on? This is ridiculous. And we're about to get more, too. We're probably going to have to discard a hand size. Uh, play the planes. Play our commander. Cast Hyena Umbra on our commander. Although, there is a world in which the core spirit dancer is also the correct choice here. Uh, yeah, let's make the core spirit dancer giant. Seems like a better source of damage output in this exact second. Uh, so there's a the Hyena Umbra. There's two card draw triggers. Love it. Though we're going to have so many more cards than we need. Here's another land. We get to search for an aura out of our deck. Yes. Only three choices, and two of them are the card I was talking about earlier. Shield of Duty and Reason. Uh, Enchanted Creature has protection from green and blue, and Mask of Law and Grace has protection from red and black. So there's three blue decks at the table. I think we're going to choose the Shield of Duty and Reason and put that on our commander. Love it. Pass like that. We're going to have... Oh, oh, forgot to attack stuff. Yep. I missed it. I missed it. Uh, that's not good. Got busy chatting. Discard a land. Oh, I still want to hold on to that. So many good cards. Uh, I guess we don't need single combat if we have Winds of Wrath, I guess. I guess the planes, just because reasonable chance to draw another land before our next turn. That's a maddening cacophony kicked. We're all going to mill half of our decks. Uh, I'm hoping that they don't get our two pieces of mass reanimation. We do draw this Katilda, though. So this is traumatized for everyone. And one of my Patreons has been playing Bruvok lately. And with Bruvok out, this just ends the game. That's a Silent Arbiter. That's not the best for us. Uh, let's see how many cool things we lost. It's probably many. Sun Titan's in there. That's disappointing. Farewell. Divine Reckoning's got flashback. We need another board wipe. It's ready for us. Oh, the brilliant restoration's in there. They got it. Uh, I think we still have Retether in the deck, though. Oh my god, this thing is huge. It's a 41-41. One goes no attacks. Yeah, I mean, they uh, they could just delete someone. <laughs> That's a thing. Well, this card just got a lot better. You may discard a card if you do return target permanent with mana value two or less to the battlefield tapped. Uh, I'm sure they have something cool in there that they want to get. Man, I got to use this one. Looks pretty sweet. We've got a soul ring in there. That's a solid choice. Colossal plow. Also very reasonable. Getting the Colossal Plow, yeah. Oh, the good news is we have a Mistvale Planes in play, so as long as we keep two permanents and the ability to activate Mistvale Planes, then whenever it comes back to our turn, as long as they don't have forced draw, uh, we'll be okay because we can just keep putting a card back on top of our deck. Oh, that's another thing too, actually. Uh, we can put the we can put the Brilliant Restoration back in the deck, which we might want to do at some point. And then, like, try to find a way to shuffle with a tutor or something. Opponent casts their commander and then crews the Silent Submersible. And you're going to swing that over to Dewubber. Silent Submersible trigger. They draw a card. Master Biomancer coming in for opponent. It's fun. Tome of Legends. Eh, a little awkward right here. I was hoping to catch the land off the top. Sage's Reverie would, should almost certainly get us into a land. So we would draw one, two, three, four with that. Maybe that's too much. Maybe we don't need to draw four right now. <laughs> Since we can't get things out of our hand. We could discard the Catilda. And then do the Disturb thing. Be pretty ridiculous. Oh man, yeah, this is uh, it's complicated. Because I also want to... We're at the point where I kind of want to leave up some protection as well. The Guardian of Faith. Although we can probably wait another turn. Yeah. I guess Sage's Reverie it is then. Uh, are we going Commander or are we going on the Spirit Dancer? Let's go on the Spirit Dancer. Get the damage going. Of course, Spirit Dancer triggers. Shram triggers. Skyclave Apparition. Oh, there's our combo. Neither of those are a land. That's disappointing. Sage's Reverie and Light Paws trigger. Use the Light Paws ability. Let's see what's left. Spirit Mantle is a card. Yeah, let's get Spirit Mantle. Oh, man, Armored Ascension. I've always wanted to use Armored Ascension. Such a cool card. Yeah, let's get Spirit Mantle, though. Uh, there's some lands. And importantly, we can go Ancient Tomb, Arcane Signet, and then leave up Blacksmith Skill. There is a Silent Arbiter in play, so we can only attack with one creature. Let's attack Fish. So here's the thing, if like, if we draw down to the bottom of our deck, uh, then we can put Brilliant Restoration back on the bottom and then get everything from our graveyard into play. That seems kind of ridiculous. Uh, let's discard the planes. Oh man, so many things. Discard the Catilda. I like that flicker form thing that we can do. Uh, Skyclave Apparition might be handy. I want to keep that around. We're at 12. God, we have to discard so many cards. I think we're set on card draw. We have so much card draw right now. Hollowed Haunting is interesting. Uh, I think we're going to ditch that one just because I don't think we're going to have time. 
not going to have time to uh, get that in right now. And one more card to go. I guess it's the Eidolon, but the Eidolon's such good damage. Hmm. I guess it's the Eidolon. Start digging for that Retether. Retether would also be pretty ridiculous. There's a Rexial. Those are scary after everyone's milled half their deck. I cut open the vaults before the game just because I'm like, well, we have two mastery animation spells. How many do we really need? Because they're not great early in the game, unless someone mills half your library, which is atypical. Not that many people play mill. I was thinking about it before the game, too. Uh, Triumphant Reckoning could be sweet in a deck like this. And uh, I don't know how expensive Brilliant Restoration is, but if for some reason it's very expensive, then uh, Triumphant Reckoning is still pretty cheap. I know it's a lot of mana. Like, it's a lot, a lot of mana, but... Uh, in a situation like this, it would be pretty good. Esper Sentinel, Teferi who slows the sunset. Battle Mastery. Importantly, that's an aura. Keep the aura train going. Opponent, Cruise the Plow. Yep. Uh, gonna give the Plow lifelink and vigilance, yeah. Uh, both to Dewubber. He has the least blocks at this moment. Continuing on our opponents, we have Fish Said Fish in the middle piloting Katori Pilot Prodigy. Been seeing this one a little bit. It's a very cool vehicle commander. Uh, definitely helps with the crewing of your vehicles. Makes it... Much easier to do. The deck does a lot of cool things, but it does seem like it struggles a little bit with punching out the damage. Blue-white, not known as big damage colors. So if I were building that deck personally, I would probably want stuff like a Chroma's Will in there just to have that finishing push. But yeah, opponent goes on the attack. They get that three white mana added to their mana pool, so they can get a lot done this turn. Opponent taps down the 43-43. Yep, makes it a lot easier for us to attack in over there. This a board wipe? No, it's a Sky Sovereign. Oh, shoots our commander. Our commander goes down. Whoops. It's not the end of the world, though I'm not particularly excited to, uh, just because mana's tough in mono white. Not super excited to have to tap out to recast it. Could have protected it with the blacksmith skill, but I don't know. That piece seemed a little less critical than what uh, everything else that's going on. Devoted Druid for opponent. Our final opponent, by the way, is Dewubber piloting Experiment Kraj. Uh, a very interesting commander. It has all activated abilities of each creature with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Tap it, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Uh, there's some silliness to get into with this deck. I see a Devoted Druid. Devoted Druid is part of some infinite combos somewhere, so I assume there's going to be some of that. Uh, there's a Morphling. Gives him the ability to get Shroud, which is interesting. Uh, there- Ooh, that's an Ameria. Play the Ameria. Now we gotta get to seven planes. We're only on three. Hopefully there's enough left in the deck. Uh, we're mono white, but still. Something you gotta worry about. I really want to leave up the Guardian of Faith because I think we're getting to that point where the board wipes might start showing up. So I think we play the Battle Mastery and we're going to use the Ancient Tomb to do it so we, so we can leave up the white mana. Spirit Dancer and Shram Trigger. Cavalier Dawn is a card. Sword of the Animus, also a card. Mmm. We can cast and equip the Sword of the Animus getting another planes. Ooh, that sounds good. Sounds really good. We'll wait a turn. We'll wait a turn. Yeah, we'll attack Cadus with this big one. Yep, can't attack or block with more than one creature each combat. This is a 10-12 with double strikes, so... I assume they're going to want to block with something. Yeah, they're going to block with the Silent Arbiter. That's going to free up our future attacks. Oh, if we give up on the... I'm going to give up on the Guardian for a turn and just sit on the Blacksmith skill. Uh, ooh, yep, that's another card draw. I'm thinking about the tempo of trying to cast and equip Sword of the Animist all in one turn. Uh, oh man, I don't want to discard that planes. Um, hmm. Man, I'm almost ready to discard Igoncho. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I think it's time. Because now planes are important to us. Oh, we got to discard two. I like all of these cards. I guess the Skyclave Apparition. So we're two turns away, theoretically, from getting a Maria active. Uh, we can play this planes next turn and... Get another one with Sword of the Animus. If we theoretically draw another one within the next two turns and then uh, pull another one out with Sword of the Animus, then we'll be on seven. I don't even know what we're getting back yet, but I'm sure we can find something. Uh, Sun Titan's in our graveyard, so of course Sun Titan. And probably getting back Nykthos, because that is a lot of mana. Rexy will come in our way. Oh, is there, there's an Urborg in play. We can't block. And the big one over to the Planeswalker. These are swamps. They have the Urborg. Uh, yeah. Can't do much about it. Uh, I think we've got a board wipe in there. I think I saw a farewell in there. That will hurt. Oh, God, they can exile the graveyard. Oh, that's not good. But I also have to wonder if, like, they're thinking board wipe. Yep, farewell's in there. I mean, it almost has to be that, right? I guess the question, oh, if they blow up their own stuff, then... God, uh, I was thinking about the Darksteel mutation, too. 
I thought we could just block because I was going to throw one in front of it. I don't know if he just got the Urborg down. I didn't see when that came in. Yeah, he's going for the farewell. Wow, this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt. I don't know if they can go for creatures, though. Like, I, I just don't think they have enough gas if they do. Uh, what do we got? Everything? Is that everything? Esper Sentinel? God, we should have left up the Guardian. Hey, everything getting exiled. That's so disappointing. Yeah, oh man, that was that was the call. I didn't think, I just, I messed it up. You suck, McBain! Because if we Guardian right there, we probably just win. Phoenix coming in. Oh, they left the graveyards intact. Okay, okay, we're good, we're good. Thank God. I'm guessing that maybe they have more plans to use our graveyard. Tayshar. Yeah, Tayshar is a good piece of reanimation right now. Still fighting a bit of a sore throat, by the way, so I'm not projecting the same as I usually do. Hurts a little more to talk than usual. It's not great. We have Thran Dynamo in the graveyard, Mask Memory, Nyx Lotus, all cards I want. Return Target Artifact or Enchantment. This is a cool card. I had to do this one time in a game. You can cast it and then immediately shoot itself to get the dice trigger if you need to get something out of your graveyard. It's pretty good. In addition to just being removal when you need it. Uh, Benevolent Blessing is a card. Play the Plains, play the Cavalier of Dawn, and this time we'll leave up the Guardian of Faith like we're supposed to. Also, we can flash this in if, if needed. I want to set up this Flicker Form combo. It'll be really good. So we'll shoot the Tayshar, and we'll pass like that. What, are we on four planes? Oh, man. Felt a lot better with that Sword of the Animus running around. Although the game's slowed down a bit now, so that'll give us time to get to that thing. We just got to avoid strip mines and graveyard removal. Uh, Bone Horde is... Oh, yeah, okay. That is a card. How does this work? We have a turn to get rid of it. That will get us killed. I guess we can also flicker form the Cavalier. Yeah, it's a 45-45, no big deal. I'm going to give this the old read just because I haven't used it. I don't think ever. <laughs> Pat one in a binder for a very long time. Uh, exile enchanted creature and all auras attached to it. At the beginning of the next end step, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. If you do, uh, all the exile cards attached to that creature. Okay, so it comes back at the end step. It's important to know. Anchor to reality. As an additional cost, sacrifice an artifact or creature. Well, we gave him the artifact. <laughs> Search your library for an equipment or vehicle card. Uh, put it on the battlefield. Mana value two or less than scry two. Opponent uses the... Shorakai Genesis Engine. Draw two cards and discard a card. Create a 1-1 one, one colorless pilot with crews as its power were two were, were two greater. God, that's hard to say. <laughs> There's already Chancery coming in for opponent. God, I really hope we find this retether. Ancestral Vision taken down for opponent. Gonna be a while. Be like turn 12 or so? 11 or 12 before they get to that. The rate we're going, we might get there. Shared Summons is a great card to get right now. Get the two you need. Ah, oh, crap, we don't have a second white permanent to activate the Misfail Planes. Yeah, we'll want to get to that. We could let opponent... Oh, yeah. <laughs> if we wanted to go super risky, we get a second white permanent in, and then we let opponent mill us to death, and then we Misfail Planes the Brilliant Restoration back to the top. <laughs> there are a lot of ways that could go wrong, but, man, that sounds like a play. That sounds like a play. I'm kind of interested in that. Opponent gets Voral and Plaxcaster Frogling. There's a, ooh, that's a land tax. Uh, that is a second white permanent. I like that. Also, we can dig out those lands we want. Although, if we get milled all the way, put the flicker form on our Cavalier. I feel like, mm, man, I was, uh, I was excited about it, but oh, the, we only have one creature. It's going to be kind of weird. Nah, let's do it. So with this deck, I think it'd be reasonably easy to uh, go Cavalier Dawn, get flicker form. Uh, and then do that whole thing, but I don't think we're going to have a lot of opportunities to just put, like, our entire deck into play. So, I'm going to I'm gonna play for that. Let's get this flicker form in. Go to combat. Attack fish. Oh, uh. March of the Otherworldly Light. Exile target artifact creature or enchantment with mana value extra... Oh, oh fish. Okay. <laughs> I guess we won't take the super risky line then. <laughs> Oh, that was going to be such a good payoff if it worked, though. The memes. The memes. <laughs> uh, I think that puts us back on a more traditional plan of uh, cast our commander and then just try to like pull stuff out of the deck until we can get to retether. Oh, uh, something to think about is that Lantax will shuffle the deck, so uh, we should put Brilliant Restoration back in if we don't need it, or if we don't need to use our mana for stuff. Narset? Oh, God, what's this say? Each opponent can't draw more than one card. Ugh. It's 
gonna make things harder. Gonna draw two more cards, discard a card, and make another pilot. Yeah, seems pretty good. Suspend ticking down. Uh, won't be great with that Narset in play. They'll have a lot of incentive to get rid of it. Plax Caster of Frogling. Boral of the Hull Clad. They have a Graph Trigger. We're gonna put Brilliant Restoration back into the deck. All of our card advantage is gonna get around the Narset. Land tax and our commander. It's good news. Oh, we have more lands in our opponents. Land tax didn't trigger. That's disappointing. Uh, I guess Scavenger Grounds is a nice safety net, though I'd really prefer not to use it. Um, let's cast our commander, though. I think I'm going to go no damage on the uh, Ancient Tomb here. That'll leave us four mana to use effects and protection and all that stuff. Graft trigger. I was just thinking opponent could be really annoying and uh, put a counter on it and then... Uh, they could pay two to give our stuff shroud when we try to put auras on it. That would be annoying. That would be very annoying. Ah, we'll swing this over to Cadus. He's been kind of a menace. No cards left, but man. The mill? Mill impacts the game in weird ways. If someone has reanimation, then yeah, you're just fueling them up. If they, if you mill the reanimation, though, and they can't get it back, then, uh, they're kind of hurting. And it sort of speaks to the fact that, like, not all cards are created equal in Commander, some cards are just better than others, and there aren't really replacements for it. There's not really another Angelic Destiny that just does a lot, things like that. So, Although, on the other hand, I guess we are starting to get to a point where they are starting to have like more redundancy for effects. But still, there's one best version of something. Everything else is like a cheap knockoff that isn't nearly as powerful. And I guess it also speaks to the fact that like you only have so many cards of each type in your deck. Like There's not an unlimited number of each function of your deck, so... You know, if you mill 10 removal cards from someone, they probably don't have much removal left in the deck. Uh-oh, that's a memory plunder. What's being targeted? Dig through time. Ah, that's fine. They're just looking for cards. They cast dig through time. Top seven, two in the hand. Mobilizer mech. When it becomes crewed, you get to crew another vehicle for free. It's pretty sweet. Triggers an R set. Kits a planes. No, not the planes. Oh, they whiffed, is what they did. Cruise the mech. Although, I think the mech just came in and can't attack, but it'll still crew something else for free. Yep, the Shorakai. Katori coming in, yep. And they'll use the Katori trigger on the Shorakai. Yep. Life Link and Vigilance. Big attack over to Cadus. Be a shot for nine. And they're going to activate the Shorakai, draw two more, discard, and make a pilot. Triggers the graft. Ancestral Vision ticking down. Trigon Predator. Uh, don't love that. <laughs> don't love that. Uh, Voral's going to double the number of counters on the Trigon Predator. It's a 4-5 now. Going to activate the Flicker form. I'm going to show opponent a little bit of good faith and not shoot their Trigon Predator, even though we definitely should. Uh, I'm going to take down this Narset, because Narset is super nasty. So it exiles out, and then it comes back with the auras attached. Shoot the Narset. Because the other thing, too, is like if they attack one of the other players, they have artifacts that we want blown up. So by not blowing their thing up right here, hopefully they do something else. Uh, Soul Ring is a card. Oh, we have Katilda? Forgot about Katilda. It is a bunch of mana, though. Uh, get the Soul Ring in. Should check for any other graveyard effects. Also, Divine Reckoning. Hmm. Hmm. It's not bad. It's not bad. We haven't shuffled yet since putting our thing back in our deck, so I'm going to cast the Benevolent Blessing right now. Put it on our commander. Still a lot of blue at the table, so we'll choose blue. And there's our cast trigger. Kind of get a peek, shuffle the library, see what's left, all that kind of stuff. Use the ability. All That Glitters is a magic card. Uh, yeah, get All That Glitters. It's now a 7-7. The problem is... Ah, uh, do we just Winds of Wrath now? Yeah, I guess we Winds of Wrath. Gonna be one short of the, uh, Guardian of Faith again. Everyone else's creatures getting blown up. Winds of Wrath, pretty good in this type of deck. Go to combat. I actually had a cut board wipes from the deck, because there were, like, six or seven. I'm like, it had, like, Austere Command, Vanquish, Farewell, Doomscar, Winds of Wrath, and Divine Reckoning. I'm like, eh, that's probably a few too many. Uh, this one over to Fish, since Fish has a lot of life. This one over to Cadus since they've just been doing scary stuff. And we'll pass like that. Sit on the blacksmith skill. Mesmeric Orb. Well, that should make things interesting. Uh, we don't have enough mana to flicker the thing either, so, you know. Unless someone else wants to shoot it, we're probably going to mill a bunch. Uh, make sure we set a stop on our upkeep, just in case we got to do misfell plane stuff. Fish, going to mill a bunch right here. Activates the Shorakai. Yep. Uh, that's a Parhelion. Nice. Yeah, that's a pretty good vehicle. If you uh, cheat the crew costs on it, those 4-4s, four no joke. Because they have Vigilance and they don't tap. So uh, once you get at those 4-4s, four it's just hard to attack into that player. Mesmeric Orb, yep. There's the Ancestral Vision, opponent will get to draw. It is turn 11. <laughs> we made it to turn 11. Our board wipe definitely made sure it got to turn 11. If we let everyone untap, I mean, I don't know if the game just ends, but like, 
someone probably goes down with the amount of things that were on board. Probably Cadus, because it's kind of wide open over there, causing headaches for everyone else. Experiment Karaj coming in, yep. I don't even know if it's even worth putting something back in with the misspell planes right now. I thought about just tapping these lands to get two additional mills, but I decided I'm not going to chance that. Oh, we finally get the land tax trigger. Yeah, that's a reason to not mill ourselves the additional. Bunch of things going to the graveyard. Oh, there's the retether. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Was hoping to draw that one. One short. I guess the land tax would have shuffled it, but use the land tax. Three planes. Go get them. It can take us a while to get to them, but what can you do? Dismantling wave. Oh. Oh. I kind of want the mill to happen, to be honest. <laughs> Play the planes. So we, you know, the play would be Dismantling Wave on Chromatic Lantern, Parhelion, Mesmeric Orb. Although, mm, maybe the Bone Horde, just because go Bone Horde, Parhelion, Chromatic. Yeah, that's fine. That seems like a fine play. Dismantling Wave. Oh, opponent's going to counter it. Okay. Okay. That's fine. That was just kind of a bait. That wasn't like a play that we needed to make. Just something to do with our mana. Uh, let's see. This one into Fish. This one into Cadus. Fish gonna take the seven. Gonna put her at 14 commander. They'll probably be able to block next turn, though. They'll be able to get some pilots in and stuff like that, so... I think it makes sense to just take right there and then try to set up for bigger plays with Parhelion and stuff like that. Where does the spell go when it gets hindered? Is that to the bottom? I forget what hinder does. One's gonna mill themselves a bunch. Mesmeric orb. Fish gonna get milled a bunch more. Probably gonna be down to about 10. One thing to think about, too, is... We probably didn't need to play that Winds of Wrath earlier, and I know we could be using the Cavalier more, but it's also kind of at the point where, like, we want our opponents to be able to kill our other opponents also, and if we just make it so no one has anything ever, which we've already done a little bit of, then one, the game's going to take a really long time, and two, no one's going to be particularly happy about it. So... Uh, I would say that we could have been probably a touch more diligent with our removal this game and just kind of let the game play a little bit more so it doesn't take forever, but we're on turn 11, and uh, I think there's at least two turns left in this game. Opponent's going to accrue the Mobilizer mech, and I'm sure that'll accrue the Parhelion. Cruise the Parhelion, yep. Oh, you want what we have to be careful of? Uh, Sage's Reverie would get us killed, which means we need to put Sage's Reverie back into the deck. Uh, so that we don't put it into play when we retether. Uh, opponent going on the attack. I didn't see where yet. They make the two four fours. One four four into us and everything else into Cadus. Yeah, we can't block. It's all flying. <laughs> Seems like a shortcoming of this deck. No flying. I think he's going to survive at two. I uh, wonder if Jeff takes him down. We go to 25. He's at six. Out of range of the Karaj. So we'll probably get that mill trigger that we're looking for. Destroy all non-artifact creatures. That's not going to work for us. Uh, time for that Guardian of Faith that we probably should have used earlier, but still have at this moment in the game. Oh, I have a feeling it's going to get real weird with the phasing and the enchantments. I forget how that ruling works. <laughs> this came up in a game once recently. I forget how, but probably something with Guardian of Faith. Uh, yeah, phase out our creatures. Guardian of Faith eats the board wipe for us. <laughs> Jeff can't be having a good time. Uh, Fish going to... Draw two more, discard, and make another pilot. Things are looking good. <laughs> Things are looking good for this retether play. Oh no, I should have activated Miss Veil Planes. Uh, uh, that's a problem. Need our stuff to phase back in. Ah, crap. We only have one white permanent right now. Yeah, that's going to mess things up. Oh, no, no, we're good. Sage's Reverie's in exile. Oh, we're safe. Okay, cool. Thought I messed it up. I thought I messed it up. Do want to be careful and make sure there's nothing else that says draw a card on it. <laughs> Uh, notably prison term is in our graveyard. I guess we can put that on. What does Retether say? Only creatures can be enchanted this way. Okay. Uh, as best that I can tell, there's no additional card draw things in our graveyard, which is good. We won't die to getting decked. Opponent's gonna tap out. Not a great idea with the Mesmeric Orb in play. Uh, they're probably assuming we're going to kill them, though. The Mesmeric Orb player. Tap up all of our lands. Make sure we've got this stop set. We do. I'm pretty nervous. I'm <laughs> pretty nervous. There's a lot of ways this could go wrong. Two opponents are fortunately tapped out, and uh, Cadus only has one card, which is hopeful. Makes me hopeful, but <laughs> this is definitely a very meme play. Perfect. Exactly zero. We had exactsies. Uh, is this one better than the other one? Yes. Put Brilliant Restoration back on top of our library of zero cards. Play Blaine's... Play the Brilliant Restoration. Here we go. It's the moment we've been waiting for. Been setting up for this for many, many turns. Oh my god, that's so many things. 
<laughs> That's so many things. Oh, we did it. <laughs> we did it. Uh, Daybreak Coronet on here, I guess. Angelic Destiny on there. Uh, Unquestioned Authority on that one. Shielded by Faith on that one. <laughs> Ethereal over there. Oh, we got Lightning Greaves in there too. Okay. Yeah, I'll put that one on there. Uh, this one on here, I guess. Oh, does, yeah, that creature's not in yet. Okay. Uh, Armored Ascension. Uh, prison turn, we can put one on, on our opponent's stuff. I think Jeff might survive the turn, so put it on their stuff. Timely Ward. Uh, what we put where already? That one's already got an indestructible, so put an indestructible on that one. Pro Black. <laughs> Pro Creatures. That's a lot of text, huh? This one over here. <laughs> oh, I can't believe we did it. Hopefully nothing goes wrong. <laughs> Definitely don't want to use that mask of memory. Oh, cool. All of our stuff has flying and vigilance. Love it. Love it. Oh, we're missing one. Uh, put that here, I guess. Uh, okay, two, two player scoop. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. It's been kind of a frustrating game. When you get half your deck milled and then you can't get anything back, doesn't feel the best. What does this say? You may attach it. Oh, there is a draw card. Oh, God. Uh-oh. Uh Uh-oh. I thought... Mm, that's not good. That's not good. Crap. Crap, crap, crap. It didn't work. Oh, that's disappointing. How do we ease our way around this? Need to put something back on top. We already used the misspell planes. Mm, crap. Oh, we almost had it. <laughs> One card draw spell. Missed it while I was looking through. No, and draw from an empty library. Yep, we lose. Whoops. Oh, I tried to play around that. I don't care. It was still a cool line of play and probably not something I'll get to do again. So, uh, yeah, that was enjoyable. <laughs> that could have been prevented, too, if we had misfell planes, uh, the unquestioned authority out of our graveyard back into our library and then, then, then counted up exactly how many things would get milled. Uh, we could have left it on the library and uh, then did that whole thing without losing the game. Uh, it was a fun ending, though. We got to see a good chunk of the deck. What I noticed is it is a may it is maybe a touch slow. I guess if we left up the Guardian of Faith like we were supposed to, then we, we probably would have cruised to victory really easily. The fact that I got greedy and went for the Sword of the Animus there, trying to set up for the following turn, uh, we paid the price on that big time. But, yeah, we got a pretty good look at the deck. It's pretty cool. It's very interesting. Uh... Very reminiscent of Shram, and from what I can tell, it seems to have a lot of the similar issues that Shram has, and just Mono White in general is just like, it's not quick. It's not a deck that wins quickly. It doesn't generate resources like the other colors do. So, you know, if you're not into the Mono White game, then it can be a little bit rough in that sense. But it is very cool, and we got to do some fun stuff. We got that little engine going with Cavalier Dawn. Sadly, there just wasn't, like, that many big scary things worth shooting all that much. So that was a thing, but... Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel, vote on which decks I play next, or if you want to get some good games of Spell Table going, be sure to check out my Patreon at the link below.